So within the REACH regulation in the EU, there's something called Annex 17. Substances that go on the list of Annex 17 are either restricted or banned. Now, let's say that I'm selling, I'm selling this mouse and it contains certain substances above the set limit in Annex 17, well, it means I can't sell that product, okay? Can't sell this mouse in that case. It's, it's quite serious. Substances on uh, the Annex 17 list, is usual suspects, phthalates, various kinds, DHP, etc. I think it's, it's the main um, cause of recalls in the EU. Then there's heavy metals, there's mercury, nickel, lead, etc. I don't know the exact number of substances on Annex 17. You can find this on the EU website. Another thing I want to mention is that the, there are different types of restrictions. As I said, in some cases, substances are outright banned. I think asbestos goes into that category. But then you also have substances that are substances that are restricted to a certain amount could be 0.1% by weight or it could be in terms of migration meaning how let's say a material is 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 absorbing what maybe maybe transferring is is a better term and then you might be looking at so and so many micrograms per area uh, per week, for example, to give an idea. And, and, and this can even go, this can even be decided, at least in part, by the product type. Say, body piercings, then you have certain migration limits concerning nickel, okay? So it's a lot to keep track of, and it can be really confusing because you've got this really big uh, regulatory scope. It's a product type, it's the material, etc., etc. And how do you then know what are the substances for starters, but, but also the exact limitations to apply? Well, good news is that if you're a brand in the EU, you're a manufacturer, you're an importer, an Amazon seller, you don't necessarily need to actually keep track of all this. What you do is that you go to a testing company, Intertech, Kima, etc. And as long as you can as long as you can deliver a bill of materials, meaning a, well, a list of components, then they can assess, okay, what are the substances that we ought to test for within the scope of Annex 17 of the REACH regulation in the European Union, and by extension, what are the, the exact limits, okay? So I don't know. I've been working with this stuff for a long time. I, I don't know any limits. I, I don't have to because the labs, they, they make this assessment on behalf of our customers, okay? That goes both for, for the assessment of the substances to be that, that goes into the testing list and also the exact limitations or the migration limits, okay? Now, the problem though is that testing isn't exactly free. Reach testing can be costly couple of hundred dollars up to thousands of dollars and it, it really depends in the end on the number of different materials and, and different components that go into the product that this is what ultimately impacts the, the testing cost when it comes to reach testing. Many of our customers at Compliance Gate, well, they get frustrated by this and, and often ask us isn't there any easier way? And in theory, and, and that's also something that the REACH regulation and the ECHA website offer a reference is that you as an importer or a manufacturer, you should, be, you should obtain test reports that serve as evidence concerning the substance content within say the, the Annex 17 uh, substance list and, and, and uh, and, and the exact limits. But in reality, let's say you go on Alibaba or Global Sources or a trade show, you will quickly find out that it's extremely rare that any of these suppliers can actually deliver any form of substance data, and much less within, within a rich regulation. So the whole idea with, let's say, data sharing uh, downstreams and upstreams in the supply chain is sounds nice in theory, 
but at least as of today as of 2022 we're not really in that that's not really the reality that you can just go and ask your suppliers so this leads back to what I mentioned in, 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 in the very beginning that in order to determine the whether your product contains Annex 17 substances, you need to arrange testing. Okay. Now, there are some, let's say, larger material suppliers, let's say big plastic suppliers like Formosa, for example, they might be able to, to produce pre existing reach test reports that they actually keep up to date. But other than these very large and, and established material suppliers, it's not something that you can really, really expect. And that also leads us to, to, to the last question, well, the last point I want to bring up in this video, and that is who might actually verify compliance uh, within the scope of Reach Annex 17? Well, in, at least in theory, the customs authorities in any EU country, the port of entry, could request a Reach test report. Personally, it's not something I've really seen. Um, I don't think, I've, well, maybe maybe a handful of cases, but it's not, it's not something that's, it's not a frequent occurrence, let's put it that way. Then there are uh, instances when certain market surveillance authorities will do compliance requests, even inspections, uh, even at retailers to request compliance documentation for their products. And this is done more on a case by case basis. My understanding is that there is, as of today anyway, no, let's say, streamlined or, or, or mandatory document submission procedure, but it's based on, based on, let's say, self policing that importers and manufacturers are, are actually ensuring that the products are compliant and, and, and so on. But there is, there, is, there is one player, one actor that is, is, is more effective than others, and, and that is Amazon. Amazon is is requesting reach test reports with covering both SVHCs and also Annex, Annex 17. And we've seen this across various different product categories. And I want to underline that we're not just talking about children's products or toys here, but we have customers that came to us and actually were had the product removed as a result of not having um, reach Annex 17 uh, compliant uh, test reports uh, for, for jewelry. Just to give you an idea, so Amazon actually, they Amazon tends to be more efficient than than the market surveillance authorities when it comes to actually verifying compliance. But in any case, as I also mentioned in the beginning of this video, if the product is well contains a substance above the set limit, then, then you can sell it, and you can rec receive a uh, compliance request at any time. Doesn't have to be at the time of entry, it could happen at a much later date. In any case, if you want more co product compliance videos, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have questions, you can write a comment on our website or also in the YouTube comment section. Thank you.